I haven't done one of these what's in my camera bag videos in quite some time and a lot has changed. Today I'm gonna to share my camera gear setup and what I take with me on my travels as well as the best travel vlogging cameras for YouTube. First iteration of my video career was this, the Panasonic DVX100A. This is what I would film reality shows with. Got the wide angle lens on it right there. This was a very standard video camera and it very much operated like one. Strap here and um, things like ND filter and all that cool jazz. Since then, my cameras have only gotten smaller and smaller and smaller, 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 and smaller. Let's fast forward to YouTube and how I've taken everything that I've learned from video production and reality shows and compressed it down into a very much simplified hack for YouTube and for me to throw on my back when I travel alone. Also remember I'm linking to my equipment buying e-guide um, in my description box so you can check that out. I list to like almost everything that I use from video production to post-production. So let's get to it. First off, we have my favorite topic, cameras. So first of all, I have to let you know that I'm a Canon person. I've been a Canon person for a long time. This is my current version of a DSLR. This is the Canon M50. It is the best travel camera for solo travelers as well as for travel bloggers. It's compact, lightweight. It's got a whoop, flip out screen. This is my B-roll camera. This is kind of like a slightly more of a cinematic camera for me just because it's more of a DSLR. You can control this manually as well as um, use the auto functions. The con to this is that it is super loud when auto focusing and this is when you're vlogging. So I kind of avoid using this as a vlogger. I'll take like a little remote with me uh, for this Canon camera as well just so that you know in the case I want to do any selfies or I need to like stand far away from this or what have you this little remote remote is or shutter remote is always handy to have. In the past, I have used the Canon 70D as my DSLR as well as the Rebel T2i, which is even more lightweight in terms of cameras like that. And then from there we go down to this size. This is the Rebel T2i, which is actually it was a really good camera. It's lasted me like over a decade and this is the new rendition you can see obviously the body is a lot larger and even more so when we go here the other camera that i take along with me which is my workhorse ironically is this point and shoot canon g7x mark ii in terms of sony equivalents to this camera you'd probably be like the sony zv1 or the 100 series this is the best travel vlogging camera and yes i've use this for years. You'll see a lot of YouTubers using this as well. It's got a flip out screen right there, which is very handy. I've actually got two of these in the case one goes down in the field. This is the other one <laughs> right there. So I'll take both of them with me. You can see on, on top, I kind of have like a little wind muff uh, to filter out wind sounds or wind noises. This is gonna be my vlogging camera. It's my hosting spots, as well as quick action shots. I haven't upgraded it to anything stronger because basically I can operate it with one hand, which is very handy because as a solo traveler, sometimes I am carrying my bags in the other hand or I have my cell phone or I have maps or whatever have you. So it's handy that I kind of have the flexibility to open it with one hand if I need to. Just an incidental accessory. I have this Peak Design camera strap, which is kind of smart. I really like some of their designs or a lot of their designs. I also have like a, a camera clip, but this is smart because it's got like these little latch releases right there. So, see my camera has got these little knobs right here. Slide them on and hook them in right there. So it's quick release. Although it's very rare that I like having this dangle around my neck. I just feel like it's just way too exposed being a solo female traveler. Nevertheless, this strap is still really nice to have. As a backup safety, I always take a GoPro with me for water sports or anything, you know, at the last minute, like some kind of action thing. I actually haven't used this that much, but it's still handy to take around with me. And lastly, here 
we have my iPhone. I always like to take a shutter remote for my iPhone and go like that. There we go. Obviously, I have a bunch of stuff on here, anything from maps, uh, metro maps, notes, uh, booking, booking confirmations. Yeah, the works. This would be nothing without that little magnetic set right there. I've got like credit cards and it's a nice little wallet with my little pop out right there in the case I need to selfie myself. Now let's get down to lenses. First of all, on my M50, I have a very general kit lens. It is a 15 to 45 millimeter lens. It's kind of like an everything lens. This is just standard, it's lightweight. It's nothing for me to take up with me. It, it's very compact as well, so I always take it with me as a backup. But what I really like to wear on this are my larger DSLR lenses. So for that, I like my 10, by 22 millimeter lens. Yeah, this is my favorite lens. It's panoramic, it captures landscapes, architecture, hotel room tours. So this is kind of like the workhorse lens for me, I feel like. So it will always be mounted onto this M50 camera in the case, you know, I pop it out. I got this in Bangkok, I got a really good deal on it, so it's it was under a thousand dollars. I'm happy with it. I'm not sure if it was gray market, but it doesn't really matter because this has lasted me years and I will never let go of it. The other lens I like to put on is this, my 70 to 300 millimeter lens. This is a zoom lens. This has been with me for a while and allows me to get in there close. This is great for street photography as well as if you see something way in the distance, it captures it. But of course it weighs a bit and this version, it's kind of like it's a little sticky, so it's not a smooth flow or smooth zoom. It's almost a little jerky, so I really have to like hold my breath when I kind of like slide it in and out just for it to be a little more smooth. This adds a lot more weight to my camera gear bag. Um, so whenever I take it up, it's, a vo it's always a very conscious, conscious decision. And for those of you who are wondering what this is, this is like a little adapter ring, um, just because due to the fact that the M50 came with a smaller, smaller barrel lens. Okay, onboard mics and audio. Now initially I was using the this Rode VidPro mic, um, which is basically a lot of vloggers use this. A lot of travel vloggers use this. It's, it's a good mic and Rode is obviously a good brand. However, what I don't like is that it's just rather rigid. And for me to pack it in my bag and have it ready to go, this is what, this is the type of space I would need in my backpack. Just because I am really, I'm kind of like a photojournalist. I kind of like um, do things rather quickly. And so when I pull things out of my bag, I pull it out really quickly. This would need to be broken down as well as put back on. Not only that, throwing caution to the wind is that you have these settings right here and if you happen to like um, accidentally turn it on the wrong setting, then you might walk away without audio on your, on whatever you recorded. So that's another thing. I have actually done that in the past and I've lost audio. So I actually have to trade this for this. This is my Movo mic. Look how teeny tiny it is. Right? Rather cute, right there. Um, this goes on right here. I do take a light panel with me, and I love this little light panel. It's a GVB gear light panel. You can adjust it like that, like so. If I ever wanted to get fancy, then I can basically take my iPhone like this. This also comes with like a little um, filter right there. So if I want to give this a warm glow, um, I can use that. But this is like what it looks like. I can light my, my the palm of my hand right there. I've loved using this for like lighting, even just like for slight set design too. If I need to like shine light on a corner of a room or something, this is a good example. You see like in my capsule hotel, that's where I use my light panel. Support accessories. I've got like this little mini one for um, my iPhone. It's a little Joby. I've got this 
larger Joby for DSLRs. It's kind of got the little balancer right there. And what I love about this is that you can position it like this, which means you can take selfies in um, vertical mode versus only portrait. But in the past, I have taken this tripod with me. This is kind of like a $40 sun pack. I kind of wanted to test and see if I could carry extra gear like a tripod so that I could get like higher support in terms of stabilization. It's a lot more cumbersome. This is my favorite selfie stick. It handles anything from a GoPro to a DSLR. It extends pretty far. Wow. So usually this right here is gonna be mounted onto this, my G7X. If you're noticing a theme, it's the fact that I'm choosing small things or lightweight compact type of gear to get around. And that's because I have a lot of little doohickeys in there for a lot of different occasions. And um, I'm carrying it all on my back alone. Now, getting down to charging things. Here is the charger for my G7X right here. I have a dual port. These are my batteries. Got one in here and got one in my other cameras. I have several of these simply because whenever one of my G7X cameras goes down in the field, I just send it in to Canon and they sometimes just give me a replacement camera. And when they do that, then they give me an extra battery as well as an extra charger. So <laughs> I love the Canon service. They've been awesome. And here we go, memory cards. You can see I have some gaffer tape on here and you will see soon why I have that. But these are my memory cards. I'm actually missing a few down here. But as you can see right here, I, I label them whenever I'm done with them so that I know or I have an idea of what's on here. I love this case because you can add extra extra memory cards in the back and I do have them. Like you'll see right here, I have the SD card right there. I'm getting to the home stretch. This is my SD card holder right here. As well as my memory card stick right there. So I have like these SanDisk um, one gigabyte SSD cards, these portable extremes, and I did like I, I did a campaign with them. I love this thing. You can throw it into the water. It can get dusty. You know, this could, this won't, because it's so lightweight and kind of like a credit card, it can dangle off of my computer and still remain attached. SSD cards are the bomb. Here we have my hyperdrive which is very handy. And that is because the last major item that I take with me in my camera bag happens to be my MacBook Air. It's necessary because look, there's only two ports. And before I used to have like a small USB hub, I was constantly trying to find space and I'd have to remove drives in order to like stick new drives in. And this is so perfect right there. Okay, so that was it. The truth is you really don't need to carry this much gear if you're a solo travel blogger. I like to be very thorough about everything. So I can probably even narrow this down even further and let me know if you want to see me do like a setup on like best travel camera gear for a minimalist or a compact blogging setups. A lot of people think that they need the best gear or a lot of cool gear in order to make great videos and that's kind of like not really the case. I'll also link down below uh, my equipment buying e-guide in my description box, okay? It has a list of almost every single main gear item or accessory I use from production to post-production. Keep an eye out, I have more videos coming out soon on um, vlogging and YouTube. Keep an eye out for those. Also, I'm working on a YouTube coaching and e-course program. Um, sign up for my wait list for when I launch. This is so that you can start your own YouTube channel too. If you like the shirt, then it's actually on my Teespring shop, which is actually showcased down below on my YouTube channel or my YouTube videos. So you'll see all my merch there. Until then, stay travel inspired, keep creating, and may the girl be with you.